Okay, I'm back for the next segment of how to build the RepRap Wilson TS 3D printer. And in this segment, I'm going to show you how to build the upright frame uh, for the printer. So I have the remaining four aluminum extrusions, uh, the rear frame brackets, and the two Z motor mounts, and the two uh, upper rod holder brackets. I've also got uh, 39 each of the T-slot nuts and the 10 millimeter long M5 screws. Um, you might not need quite as many of each of these depending on which accessories you're going to mount to the printer. Alright, and to start, um, get the four extrusions and we're going to set out all of the parts so that we can see how they're going to fit together. Set the four frame uh, pieces how you want them to go. If you're building a standard uh, from the standard list of parts, the longer two will be your left and right, and the shorter two will be your top and your bottom. Uh, so we'll call this top and left and right, bottom, and then these two parts are identical, so doesn't matter which side they go on. Um, I'll just set one upside down next to each corner because they're going to go on the back corners here. The two motor mounts are mirror images. So the way to keep straight which one is goes on which side is the the small hole here on the top is for the z-axis smooth rods and so those rods should be to the outside of the frame and the this surface here uh, should be up. So put one on each side, they will sit like that right on the corners of the frame. And then the upper rod holders, uh, the same way, they're mirror images. And the hole here lines up with the hole on the motor mount to hold the smooth rods, so they should be pointed up like this and to the outside. And they'll go, the extrusions will go inside those when we're done. So now that we have the we have them all set out like this. Uh, take the three that go to your left and set those aside. Keep the three for the right here for a minute. And then move the other extrusions all out of the way. And then take the piece that's going to be the right side of the frame and get four of your T-slot nuts. And slide those in the first side. I'll get the rear frame bracket, two of your bolts and your Phillips screwdriver or whatever driver is needed for your uh, screws. And we're just going to attach this lower rear bracket enough so it'll stay put. It should be aligned with the bottom of the extrusion. And then get the upper rod holder, and since this bracket is on the left, our rod holder should be pointing up like this to the top. So slide that on, and turn it back over, and get two more screws, and go ahead and attach these two nuts. And then 
make sure the uh, piece should be slid all the way on so that the extrusion is against the top of the plastic and tighten these two down. Okay, just like that. Now, with this side up, get four more T-slot nuts and slide those into this upper side. And get two more screws and attach the other side of the lower two nuts now will be for the uh, motor holder. It goes down here, so two more screws. Also, should be it should be right flush with the bottom of that, and if it's slittled down a little too far, just loosen it. Set that, and then push each one down, and then tighten them. So there's our right side. And I'm just going to repeat the process with the left side. And the left side isn't, uh, isn't going to have exactly the same number of nuts because that's the side that's going to also hold our uh, electronics mount and the LCD mount. So this first side is going to have three extra uh, nuts installed into it. So you need a total of seven. bracket on so that it is pointed, it should be pointed towards the other one. So that means it should be pointed this way towards us. So attach it with two more screws. rod holder again points the front, the opposite side that you put that rear bracket on, like that. So for it we'll use these the outer two most nuts and we'll leave these three um, nuts in the unused part for now. So two more screws.
There are T-slot nuts with little springs attached to them that won't slide around like this. I believe they'll stay where you put them, but they cost a car arm and a leg. Make sure that's against the top, and then tighten it. come back to those later. And then on this side uh, it's the same uh, four T-slot nuts. screws to attach the upper piece. There you go. And then our last motor mount will go again right at the bottom with two more screws. There are also T-slot nuts that you can put in later, like if you forget to put those in on the back or you're not, you don't think you'll use them, but then you decide later you do, they make ones that can, you can put in uh, without having an exposed end, but those also are super expensive, so it's better to plan ahead. Okay, so this is what we have so far. So now get the piece that's going to be the bottom of the frame and in the top side of that we will need to put in four more T-slot nuts. Just move them to the middle so they won't fall out and then turn that over so that you're on the opposite side and in that side we will need six T-slot nuts. Okay. Those to the middle. So now that's the this the side with six is for the back side. So we'll put it back down so that it should go just like this. So on the front of the bottom, you should have four nuts right now visible, and get two screws and attach the outer two nuts to the motor mounts. The other two are going to be used to attach to our y-axis. Okay, now 
before you tighten them too much. Make sure they're the ends, the corners are pushed together. Okay. And turn everything around. So you can get to the other side. On this side should have six, and the outer two on each side will go to the rear brackets, and that'll leave two in the middle for the y-axis. So you'll need four more screws now. Okay, tighten those down nice and snug. Uh, just don't break anything. Okay, now we're ready to get the last piece, the top piece. Now the top uh, bar is going to need uh, two nuts for the front edge to attach here and two on the back for the same thing. But it's also going to need uh, two on the top and an extra three on the back because I'm going to use the filament holder and the LCD mount. So first get two, put them in the top slot, move them to the middle so they won't fall out on you, and then rotate it so this is the top so it gets two more. And then rotate it one more. Turn will be the back, so the back gets a total of five. Okay, I'll turn it back around to the front side and slide it into place. So we should have two here, uh, two on the top, five on the back. I also have exactly one nut left, which is correct. Um, we'll use that later. So get two screws and attach the corners on the front. Check and make sure that there's no gap here at the corners um, when you tighten this down.
and that's assuming that your uh, extrusions were all cut accurately, which means that the top and the bottom bars should be exactly the same length. If you know that one isn't, then you can adjust a little bit for that as long as the uh, there's enough, you can leave, have as much gap as is needed as long as that nut, you know, is still, still attached. So now flip it upside down, so this is the back side. And get two more screws and attach the outer two most nuts to the corner brackets. Okay, so that's starting to look pretty good now. Now to finish off the uh, frame, we're going to attach the Z end stop uh, mount and end stop. So get this uh, small printed part as well as the end stop that you're going to use here and whatever mounting screws uh, you can use with that. I'm going to use two 16 millimeter M2 uh, screws and nuts, and you'll also need one of your 10 millimeter M5 screws and the last T-slot nut. So the way this works is this is going to hold the end stop on the left side of the printer. So the switch itself goes inside here in the gap between, and you want the lever to be extended out towards the front uh, because it's good. There's going to be a a screw that we're going to install later that's going to touch that when uh, the z-axis moves down to the bottom of the printer. So put the t-slot nut in here and actually first we'll we could attach this later but it's easier to do it before everything starts to come together. the front two holes of the three that are on here. Let's see how many times I can drop this before I get it on there. This end stop um, doesn't need a very long wire on it. Um, I've pre-wired all of these. And this one's pretty short because the electronics is going to actually be right here. So it doesn't, and this part never moves. So put the M5 screw through there and just attach it to that nut. Loosen a little, we can slide it around, put it just above the motor mount. You can always move it around later. Turn it down. Okay, so there we have that. So that finishes this part of the frame assembly. Then, what I'm going to do next is actually build the x axis assembly, which is then going to get put onto this and the whole thing. Well, this will get mounted to the y-axis, and then the x will get attached to here, and it'll all come together at once. All right, be right back.